Good morning, this is Sinta Everson of Fair Divorce, and we are celebrating Youth Day in South Africa today, which is great because I think we're going to discuss a few things that are very relevant to children and the youth in all over the world, actually. But we're also uh, preparing to celebrate Global Fair Divorce Day, which is on the 25th of June. And I'm going to do a series of interviews to discuss this with people who work with divorce, who've experienced it themselves, and who've become experts in the field. And with me here today is Errol Gage um, of the, the, the JRC to discuss his experience and some very interesting work that he has done. Welcome, Errol, and thank you for being here. Thank you, Santa. Happy Youth Day. Thank you. Same to you. Right, please tell us about the JRC. What is the JRC? That is an organization that you founded. That's correct. The Justice and Reconciliation Center. It's a, it's a private child protection uh, uh, center. We do family mediation and we also do forensic investigations. We've got uh, 22 helplines, mostly dealing with denial of contact, denial of maintenance and false accusations. We do lots of charity cases. We try to prevent, we try to preserve families and protect victims from predators. So um, the jealousy fills a gap. It's, it fills a gap in the market for parents who want to divorce without the costs of lawyers and the pain of conflict. Um, and for, for parents who are looking for strategies to handle high conflict personalities, um, a gap in the market for strong mediators who can handle obstructive behavior, and for forensic investigators who can spot parental alienation, who can cancel plausible lies, and for counselors, uh, a gap in the market for counselors, for parents and the children who are traumatized by domestic violence, hostile aggressive parenting that translates into parental alienation. Well, there's definitely a big need for that, not only in South Africa, but all over yes. the world, I believe. So tell us, how did that start? How did you start that? It started with my own marriage and my own divorce. Um, I was a victim. So I was beaten, I was stabbed. And um, when my ex thought I was leaving her, she threatened to destroy me, to ruin me financially, to destroy my reputation, my career, take my family, take my friends, make my children hate me and, and betray me if I divorced her. And what, actually, what happened next was that she carried out her threats. She lied to the kids and then eventually she kidnapped them um, to stop them from, from learning the truth and from telling the truth. And that left me facing false accusations. And my ex used hired guns and dirty tricks to cover up her abuse and to win the divorce. And the shock to me was I went everywhere for help. I went to private professionals, went to institutions. Nobody listened and nothing worked. So learning from that, what did I need? What wasn't available? The JRC now supplies the services that I needed at the time that didn't exist at the time. Wonderful, wonderful. So if you look at your own story, um, what were the key events in the process of your divorce? Well, let's say after the divorce, the divorce went through in 2011, and I processed the information, looked at the, you know, at the shocking catastrophe that, this, that was this high conflict divorce and its outcome. And I said, something has to change. We can't have this going on in, in other people's uh, families, um, what happened in mine. So in 2012, I approached a nonprofit in Pretoria. It was called the RJC, and it dealt with restorative justice. Mm -hmm. And I approached the, the director and I said, let's develop protocols to divide, to, to guide the court and to, and to guide professionals in high conflict divorces so that they aren't fooled, they aren't tricked, and they can make um, wise decisions that, that result in, in, in protecting uh, our victims. Um, since my background is auditing, the chairman of the board asked me to audit the RJC. And then to my horror, I discovered systemic fraud um, mm -hmm. and that the RJC was actually selling forensic reports to the highest bidder. Mm -hmm. So I submitted my report, the director quit, the RJC lost its funding, but it opened my eyes to the need for something new. It showed me I couldn't just trust the people that existed because something was, something was wrong. So in 2013, um, I married my second wife, Lorraine. That's the pretty girl in the, in the background with me. Mm -hmm. And um, something happened at my wedding. 
Well, my first wife sent the police to arrest me at my wedding. What on earth for? Well, I had invited my children and she didn't want them to go. So um, she made them angry with me by saying that I was uh, in maintenance areas. And now the kids are angry. But now she needs to prove that I'm in maintenance areas. So she sent the police um, with a false maintenance uh, uh, accusation. And that was really a, 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 a stunt yeah. for the children to watch. So the children didn't come to the, to the wedding. Okay, so she sent the police to validate her claims. So what happened next? I could have responded in anger. I have a protection order. I could have used it. Instead, I responded by starting the JRC in 2014 to help who? To help victims of false accusations. And then what happened next? In 2015, I sent uh, 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 my first wife uh, uh, an email quite legally inviting her to, uh, to an other court settlement where I would not reveal her various crimes. And she had me handcuffed and arrested. Because of the so, email you sent? Yes. Well, she didn't want the stuff that was in my offer of, of settlement mm -hmm. to go in front of the social worker who had been appointed by the children's court. So she needed to hide what I was saying. And her, and her method was to accuse me instead. So if I can just take a step back, how can she have you arrested? Did she have a protection order against you based on those false accusations? True, absolutely. So okay. we had a settlement. So we had a settlement and we both walked out with a protection order and she used the protection order wrongly. Nothing stopped me from sending, a, from sending an email. Yeah. But she cried. She cried the tears. People were fooled. I was treated like the, like the baddie. And I once again, um, my eyes were opened to the ability of the manipulator, to the ability of the false accuser to make false accusations stick. And the, and, 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 and the simple fact that in many cases, men just don't have a voice. Men are not heard. Men are sort of, uh, 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 men's guilt is presumed despite the evidence. Anyway, so with this shock, I mean, I was arrested. I was handcuffed in front of my wife. Uh, I was arrested. I was thrown in, I was thrown in sales. Uh, for the night. Again, I could have thrown my toys. Instead, uh, Lorraine and I, we responded by starting our first helpline, yeah. our WhatsApp yeah. helpline for victims of procedural abuse. And then in 2016, um, her, her complaint that I had breached uh, 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 the order translated into a criminal court and she appeared and she said, I'm in fear of my life. And I saw how the courts, the prosecutors, and the magistrates are vulnerable to emotional tricks. Yeah. And so I started, I approached Eunice and Witz to start my PhD, uh, uh, to ready to launch a reform process to protect the courts, to protect the professionals from being manipulated and abused. So that's a matter of education, I think. Everybody needs education in that regard. And I know, Errol, that you've done a lot of work since then and a lot of research. Would you tell us more about that? Thank you, Santa. Well, it is a lot. Um, divorces anyway are complex. High conflict divorces are uber complex. Mm. And divorce abuses are complicated and tricky. So my research has been slow and driving and interdisciplinary. So often we think, what's a divorce? A divorce is a legal end to a marriage, we think. No, for many professions, a divorce is an opportunity to make money, to launch a career, to take sides, and to take revenge on somebody for a wound in my past. Okay? Mm -hmm. So divorces happen in an industry, and that industry is complicated. It's a very interesting industry. It it's combines a big, a public, it's a big yeah. well-funded but it's the public sector and the private sector. There are regulators. Um, the air, the, the, there are a number of areas of law uh, and, and, and many courts at work. There's the whole uh, paradigm between mediation versus litigation. So there are many professions. Each profession has their multi, has their specialist disciplines. Very often in family law and in, and in, and in decision-making, the politics of gender, class, race, 
mm. come to the fore. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, at root, you've got the psychology or the pathology of the individuals who are motivated to, to act, to make decisions, to, you know, to, to make false accusations, to grab the kids, etc. Yes, definitely. So there's a lot at work here. And if you really want to you know, offer reform, a genuine reform, you want to understand what are all the factors uh, are at play. Mm. Very interesting. Yeah. So yes, um, like you said, there's a lot of at play, um, the psychology of it, the economics of it, the financial side. What else is there? Um, so your PhD, what was that uh, about? Yeah. Well, it started off as 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 a, as a, as a legal question, um, the nature of procedural abuses in divorces, mm -hmm. but it, it expanded. So now it's, we're looking at four at four areas: um, the economics of the divorce industry. I used to lecture economics. The economics of the divorce industry: who gets the money? Who writes the rules? Yes. Why do hired guns emerge? Why are hired guns tolerated? Mm -hmm. um, and then psychology, why do false accusers lie? Why are professional and courts so easily fooled by lies? Yes. How are children deceived and manipulated? And then, you know, speaking for myself, why do victims fail to speak up? And when victims uh, do speak up, why are victims not heard? So that's about psychology and social psychology. Yes, definitely. And if we look at law, you know, there's obviously the law of the family, the law of the child, and we have a, a Children's Act that's like 200 pages uh, thick. But there are gaps and loopholes in that act. Too many. And it allows, too many. And it allows divorces in South Africa to be exceptionally expensive and exceptionally bitter by world standards. South African divorces are extreme. Yes. If you look at global practice. And then procedural law. You know, the Constitution makes beautiful promises. The Domestic Violence Act promises protection. The Children's Act promises protection. But those rights and those protections, they vanish in practice. Okay. So how, so, so how is procedural law, or the law procedure, the uh, able to trump, to replace the substantive uh, 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 rights that we're supposed to have? And then regulatory bodies, um, lawyers, attorneys and advocates are, are, are regulated by the Legal Practices Council, psychologists by the HPCSA, yes. social workers by the CACSSP. So we are supposed to be protected, the public is supposed to be protected from rogue professionals. Yes. And, okay. Okay, I want to ask you, yeah. It's just a question about the protection and the law that I that interests me. In the event of false allegations, the way I understand it is if somebody comes to the police or to somebody with, a, with an allegation of abuse or assault or whatever, something has to happen to protect that person in case it's true. So there's a whole lot of things that start playing out to protect that person in the event that it might be true. But what happens in that period um, when they discover or if they discover that it's not true? What is the damage that has been done? How much time has gone past? Um, and while they are supposedly protecting the, the perceived victim, yes. and then it might not have been true. Yeah. So on that one, the common law, you know, it makes promises. It says that if you commit fraud, um, and of course, uh, 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 inciting a professional to write a false report is encouraging fraud. Mm -hmm. If the impact of those false accusations is to defame a person, well, then you have a, a, a claim for, for defamation, criminal injuria. Yes. If a person lies on oath, and of course, every affidavit is on oath, yeah. then that's perjury. But yes. those three are really the most, well, it's sort of with perjury. Perjury is almost impossible to get a policeman to accept. And unless you can start off with a criminal charge of perjury, your case will never appear in a criminal court to, 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 uh, um, for the truth to emerge. Mm -hmm. So for various political purposes, police stations are under pressure to pretend that crime is, is less, 
So they work uh, very hard to make certain classes of crime go away. And if um, you're the victim of false accusations, especially of the domestic violence and, and molestation type, um, though on paper you have remedies, your actions are, um, are, are hard to achieve. But it's one of the speciality areas for the JRC because it is so hard, because it's tricky, because you need to really know what to do, especially when you're dealing with people who don't have money. So yeah. how do you, I mean, the big question is, how do you, in South Africa's legal system, where people typically buy justice, how do you get justice when, you are, when, you, when your name is uh, uh, discredited by the accusations? Nobody uh, believes you. People think they have a right and a duty to punish you, and you simply have no money or no money left yes. to hire somebody to champion you. So it really is, I've got to say that, there, there, there is a, a list of, let's call them perfect crimes in South Africa. Mm -hmm. Crimes that you can get away with. Mm. And false accusations of domestic violence, false accusations of sexual molestation, um, are, 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 are judicial murders. Yes. That That's the false accusers, where the, they are almost, they are near perfect crimes. Um, and many people, I believe, have been falsely accused and the false accuser has got away with it, which means the children have landed with the psycho. Yes, to me, it's like a systematic character assassination that is yes. executed, uh, especially with some of these dirty tricks and things that we'll get to. I believe it's a form of judicial murder. Yeah. And there's very little psychological difference between, between a, a person who hires a hitman yeah. And the person who hires an attorney, but also a type of hitman, to 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 rent to to turn false accusations into the elimination of of of, of a parent. Mm. But that's what is very the, 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 the psychological psychologically very a very little difference yes. between the one type of psychopath and the other type of person. But that's what lawyers are trained to do: is to put parties opposing parties in a position where they can fight until there's a winner and a loser. Sure. With, That's with the much regard system. for the consequences. Well, you know, uh, uh, we must give uh, attorneys their due. They have a, a right and a duty to, to, to champion their client. Mm -hmm. It just so happens um, that when it comes to family law, we've got this, uh, this tension between in, uh, helping the co-parents to fight each other but also wanting the, the co-parents to be co-parents and cooperate. Yes. So it's not so much that lawyers are in the wrong. We've got a clash of systems um, and family law, which is asking husband and wives to become partners, to, to unite as a, as a couple and to become families. It, when, when you have an adversarial system that, is, that, that, that works on polarizing people, yes then when a lawyer does his or her normal job of championing the, the, the client, they might very well be destroying a family. So if we're looking at the individuals, the professionals that work in the industry, and then the law as such, our legislation that we have, and the government, who's playing the role? Whose responsibility is it then to, to solve this problem or to protect all of us? Well, that's why my PhD is so complicated. It's a big picture. So let's have a look. Um, I was talking about the uh, sort of uh, about um, uh, my research, and, and the fourth area was forensic science. Yes. Um, and that touches on your question about who's responsible. Mm. Well, very often the office of the family advocate, which is an attorney and a counsel, social worker working together, the family advocate and the family counsel counselor, they've got the job of spotting, spotting and stopping. They have the job effectively of quality control. Mm. And I would say that the family counselor is the source um, the, uh, in South Africa of the most of the highest number of court reports, forensic reports dealing with divorces and, and, and children. Mm -hmm. And the trouble is, in, in my opinion, is that the office is not set up to spot the psychopaths. Yes. And for whatever reason, they don't see procedural abuses. In my opinion, 
they don't actually apply the Children's Act, especially they don't apply Section 7 of the Children's Act, mm -hmm. which, mm -hmm. which specifies the elements that go into report. I have yet to see, having read hundreds of reports, I have yet to see one that actually uh, answers the Section 7 requirements that says, whenever a child is concerned, the following factors have to be, I mean, have to be mm -hmm. uh, 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 listed. And I've never seen a, 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 a family advocate report that covers a spectrum of, um, of, of, of factors. And all too often in the absence of a psychologist in the picture, because it takes somebody trained to spot personality disorders and a lawyer and a social worker are not trained to spot those disorders. So in the absence of, a, of, a, of an expert, manipulators, sociopaths, there's nothing more charming and manipulative and plausible than a sociopath. And they dance their way through the family court system. Mm -hmm. So, so I mean, I did a, a paper for the Psychology uh, uh, Society back in uh, 2019. Mm -hmm. And um, why the borderline personality dis disorder, why the BPD or why the psycho gets the kids. Mm -hmm. And one of the reasons are, is that, is that our, our institutions are not geared to spot or to stop psychopaths, or you know that class, the class of people with malicious, with truly evil motives. Um, they're not geared to to spot. And if if people don't see what the what the truth is, they are very uh, uh, they're at seriously at risk. The, the courts, social workers, psychologists, and even attorneys are at risk of taking the wrong side. So tell me, we're talking about people with malicious intent or really vindictive behavior and even people with personality disorders. Yeah. So nobody's trained to spot these things or to recognize them and act on them. The average person on the street doesn't know about it either. So you go through this process and you get slaughtered by somebody who behaves this way and who literally plays the system. That's true, there's no it? recourse for the normal person like myself who's going through a divorce and relying on these professional people who are actually not doing their jobs properly. Well, thank God that there are clinical uh, psychologists who are trained to spot these types of problem people. Um, they provide, uh, a, 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 you know, a, a critical resource mm. in South Africa. The trouble is that their private wisdom is not publicly known. Yes. So true. you ask the question, who's who's failing the country? Mm -hmm. um, and I would argue that the psychology uh, uh, profession mm -hmm. can do a lot more in public mental health, mm -hmm. uh, public uh, public mental health training. So that and, and of course, and the education department. Yes. I, I yes. question the wisdom. I mean, I studied, for example, biology uh, 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 and geography. I have used very little of my biology and geography school training. Mm. I would really love to have, instead of spending all those years on those subjects, spend time instead on, on spotting the psycho, on understanding uh, uh, adult uh, relationships, understanding co-parenting, understanding how to buy a house, how to marry and divorce. In other words, law and psychology really have a place at school level yes. in preparing our children for the burdens um, and risks of adulthood. But there's a gap in that. And it means that we are, we are churning out so many kids who enter into relationships. Mm -hmm. They don't spot the problem before it's too late. And in a country with, with our exceptionally high domestic violence rates, we need to do a whole lot more between the education department, the psychology profession, the social work profession, we need to do a whole lot more in preparing our children how to avoid dangerous people, to avoid dangerous relationships, avoid marrying dangerous people. Because if you don't marry a dangerous person, if you don't have a child with a dangerous person, you're not going to have a high conflict divorce and all of the misery and ruin and costs that we are seeing. Yes, it's very valuable what you said, because if children are trained this way, they'll be protected and safer as well. Oh, and yeah. talking about safety, 
So if a person is on the point where divorce is the only option for them, it seems very dangerous and a, a treacherous path to follow. What's the best thing to do? Is it safe then to get divorced or not? Is it safe to get a lawyer? Is it safe to follow that process? So let's start off at the beginning. Is it safe to marry? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Marrying the right person is perhaps the happiest and most important decision that a person can make in their life. Yeah. Um, so marrying the right person is key for happiness. Marrying the wrong person or marrying a, let's just, you know, uh, 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 talk about marrying a psycho, marrying a person who has, is predisposed to destroying you, to has evil intentions, is the most dangerous decision that a person can make. Yeah. So getting into bed with, with someone like that is, is truly risky. Now, yeah. marrying that person brings a double risk. Firstly, you have the life together and you're then at risk of all sorts of, of abuses. But in the divorce, he or she has the, has sort of, uh, will bring a divorce attorney. Mm -hmm. And the divorce attorney in the hands of, uh, of a psycho is a terrible thing. So uh, uh, the divorce attorney um, who has sort of, uh, so the psycho who weaponizes the divorce with false accusations mm -hmm. and a divorce attorney can do as much damage or perhaps even more damage than the psycho that hires an assassin. Yes. Okay, so, so I mean, the message is none of us should enter into a relationship with our eyes closed. None of us should get married with our eyes closed. Much more of us should actually listen to the wisdom of our parents and our peers and look for reasons not to marry. One of our first cases, um, he wanted to marry her. They met at church, and the pastor absolutely refused to let them marry. And his church says, this woman, there's nothing wrong with her. So, the, um, so he was stubborn and proud. So what did he do? But he listened. Nope, he changed pastors, and he got married some other church. Sure. And, and, you know, chaos, catastrophe, crisis, and absolute misery followed. So we sometimes are too proud to take advice. Um, and sometimes we are too young to make wise decisions. So, yeah, so, so, so we can't just close our eyes and get into, into bed with someone. And we simply can't marry. And of course, if you have a reason to divorce somebody because there are, there's domestic violence. If you, someone who is domestically violent in the marriage is going to be domestically violent in the divorce. Yeah. True. It goes without saying, actually. The best predictor of future performance is past performance. Yeah. So if you're divorcing somebody because he or she cheats on you, steals from you, lies about you, hits you, yeah. the divorce is not suddenly going to turn them into some sort of angel. Yeah. They are going to do what they did before, but maybe even more so. Yes, so because yeah, there's so a mistake. So the divorce decision must not be taken lightly. So, so some people, I think, divorce too quickly. Some people divorce too slowly. Yeah. And, and too many people divorce um, in ignorance um, and are naive, are lackadaisical, too lazy to do their research, yeah. and they get taken to the cleaners. So what is the best course of action? Let's say I'm going through a divorce and my spouse has got uh, this behavior or, or even a personality disorder and has a lawyer that's supporting that where do i go do i need to find a, a gun that's bigger than theirs or do i do something totally different so the children's act helps you the children's act says before anybody approaches a, a court um, when a child is concerned um, they must attempt to draw up a parenting plan. Yes. So a parenting plan by way of mediation with a social worker or, or equivalent is really the substitute for the traditional litigation procedure dominated by one or, or two attorneys. Mm -hmm. So really, so some people say you can't mediate um, in, in, in high conflict situations. And I would argue that you 
have to mediate in high conflict situations to explore the potentials and opportunities um, and to prevent um, throwing, a, throwing a grenade into the lap of, uh, of a psycho. It's a very dangerous thing. Dangerous for, for you, dangerous for the psycho, dangerous for the kids. So um, there is a pathway that's described by the Children's Act, and it's a totally rival pathway. It's an alternative uh, rival uh, 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 path to the divorce, and it's a path of mediation. And I think in South Africa, we have, we have not explored the full value of mediation. We don't give it all the respect and resources that it deserves. And, uh, and, um, and the, the result is that too many uh, divorces are weaponized. And then you have those people who just refuse to cooperate. They will just not do mediation. They just want to have a litigation war. And what do you do with those? Well, when we look at the list of tricks, the 30 tricks, mm -hmm. we'll come to that soon. Okay. Um, obstruction. Obstruction yeah. of mediation and sabotage of mediation are very common dirty tricks, very often with an attorney whispering in the air saying, go through the motions, make this go away, and then we will go to court, and that's where the real action is, and I will give you everything you want in court. Yeah. As long yeah. as you are prepared to make sufficient Sufficiently false accusations, I can get you what you want. Just on that, Errol, something I hear, I've heard it so often, when uh, there's a party who's really um, aggressive and really applying dirty tricks and things, I'm talking about the person who's getting divorced, the spouse. Oh. I have so often heard them somewhere in the process saying something to the effect of, it wasn't me, it was my lawyer that advised me to do these things they, they literally plead ignorance and i always say well your attorney is supposed to act on your instruction so they cannot simply go ahead and do things if you do not give them permission or approve but they play it off off like that so often we do have a case of an of an advocate who on record mm -hmm. told his client if you make these accusations, I can get you the following. So in the, in, the, in the history of the legal profession, has there been anybody who whispered some dirty uh, 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 trick advice? Of course. Mm. But let's also remember that the type of personality that approaches a lawyer looking to ruin, destroy, and eliminate the co-parent is a dishonest one. Mm. So it's very likely that he or she arrived with an agenda and is simply asking the attorney how to make the agenda work. But I also want to, I want to also introduce something. A lot of attorneys will land up um, being, being, uh, being hired guns, hitmen for their clients, sincerely believing that they are actually acting for the good person, mm. uh, protecting the good person from, from abuse and truly believe that they are acting justly. Yes. Because it's so easy to arrive um, at the professional and give a story. I remember somebody came to us at the JRC and her opening words were um, in a whisper, he raped me. Mm. And by that she meant, he is a monster, please do your utmost to destroy him. Mm. Okay, now, because we have a forensic investigation arm, we're able to test these, these allegations. Yes. But lawyers don't have forensic in investigators in, in the main. So very, and not, nor do social workers and psychologists. So, so those two professions are very vulnerable to what I call emotional capture. Yes. Someone yes. tells a sub story, they are plausible about it. And the more, you know, sociopaths are plausible. So the, the better they tell a, 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 a sub story that they, that they tug at the professional's heartstrings, another professional feels that he or she has a right and a duty to punish the wrongdoer. Yes. And they have no idea that they have been tricked, hoodwinked, and they have been emotionally captured and they are actually acting as a hitman for the abuser. That's very true. And it brings us back to the ignorance about the personalities and the disorders that are out there. So again, going back to my, 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 my research, 
I have sympathy for the professions when they are caught with their pants down. Because mm. if, you, if you think about it, a lawyer is not trained in psychology. Mm. So how is he or she going to spot the, the deceptive client? The social worker is not trained in law. True. So how is he or she going to know when someone asks him or her for a forensic report that actually it's all part of a dirty trick campaign in a windmill? Yes. Okay. And even psychologists are not, are not who don't specialize in, 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 in clinical uh, psychology are unaware of the pathologies and they're not trained either for when the, the psycho dances into their, in the, into, into their rooms. Mm. So you have three professions and they all are marvelously educated in their own way, but they have specialist knowledge and they are vulnerable to being tricked outside of those areas. Yes. And that's why it makes sense very often to have a collaborative divorce process, especially yes. in high conflict, because you need all these ex different um, expertise um, in the process sure. to make sure that you know what you're dealing with. And the million rand to pay for it. Which and now what happens is, have. what happens if you don't have the million rand? Yes. So, so you know, here in South Africa, we know we're a very special country, and we have the problems of the top. We have the problems of the rich West, and we have the problems of of the poor third world. Yes, true. But there's a lot of talk about life at the bottom of the pyramid. Mm -hmm. So many of our divorces are happening at the base of the pyramid. Where there's no money to fund mm. you know justice there's no money to fund teams but lives are at stake if you have the money to buy justice if you have the money to buy uh friend investigators that's great but that's the that's a minority of cases true so what is fair then what what would be and but but before we do that where does ethics come into this thing uh if you are in that bottom sector, you don't have the money, you don't have the knowledge and the expertise, how are you going to get through it? So we spoke earlier about, about, about professions who are, you know, who are failing, the, failing the country, and I, and I, and I suggested that, that lawyers, the social workers, and, 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 and psychologists could do more in terms of public mental health or public uh, law awareness. Um, some people say that they don't because it's so, there's so much more money in, 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 in treating the problems than preventing them. Yeah. So yeah. yes, the professions could do more. And I think um, as, we, as we realize just how damaging high conflict divorces are, how damaging um, domestic violence is, Increasingly, we will invest resources um, in, in, in public education uh, programs. So it's a work in progress. Like, well, <laughs> everything's a work in progress. The question is, is the trend line up or down? Yeah. Um, I'm not sure every single day when I look at our cases, when I look at the media, I'm not always sure that the trend line is up. Mm -hmm. I think in some areas, things, uh, things aren't getting better. And I, yeah, I want to talk about um, high guns and false reports. Mm -hmm. um, South Africa simply, you spoke about standards and ethical standards. South Africa is very slow to produce forensic standards, mm -hmm. which means that all too often a person can approach a social worker and say, um, my daughter told me that um, her father is looking at, 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 at him funny. Will he do a report? And uh, by the way, you know, if, if the report can say, I get sold custody, that would be so nice. Thank you very much. And then the social worker will, will pick up on the, um, the allegation of, of, of sexual risk and will happily uh, uh, produce a one-sided report and not ever contact the father to discover what's going on. So the hired gun ambush report uh, uh, scenario, it's very you know, it's a, it's it's mainstream in these high conflict litigation divorces. Yes. So you would expect, so you would expect or hope that between that the ethical code for attorneys would stop that practice, yes. that the ethical code for psychologists and social workers would stop that, or would outright stop that process, 
and put in um, uh, norms and guidelines, a protocol for how do you handle this type of scenario? Because it's a common scenario. Yes, very and common. It's a, and it's a tricky one. If if someone comes to you and says there's a there's a there's a there's a sexual risk to you know, to a child, you can't say you might be trying to capture me as a hired gun. Go away, because you don't want to take close your eyes to a genuine risk. Mm. But if you accept the case, how do you then handle the risk of 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 of, of having been hoodwinked, and then uh, expose yourself? To an attorney on the other side who says you're a hired gun, you didn't you didn't uh, check your claims, and your report is worthless. But so we just, yeah, so so in short, we don't have forensic standards in our country for 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 divorce reports that can ensure that the guilty gets punished and the innocent go free. But you know what? If you have to assess a situation, the principle of at least, at the very least, hearing both sides of the story seems like a basic principle. Why don't people do that? Because like you said, it happens so often. They hear one side of the story and they run with it. Well, you would think that. So what happens is this is where history lets us down. Mm -hmm. So once upon a time, before the Children's Act, when divorces were adversarial, mm -hmm. okay, and then... And then to get a divorce, you had to, somebody had to prove fault. Yes. So, so he had an affair, for example. So now you would hire a private eye to go get the photographs of them in infogante delicto. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then that evidence would be would be the, the basis for the divorce. Okay. So they existed um, over time industries to produce um, evidence of fault for a party. Yeah. in an adversarial situation. Mm -hmm. There wasn't a, a custom of, of collaboration, of partnership, of sharing information, um, of cooperation beforehand. Or co-parenting for that matter. Co-parenting. Now comes the Children's Act and it has co-parenting provisions. Mm -hmm. It says things like, you can't, you can't do anything that's going to adversely affect your co-parents' rights without approaching him or her first and discussing it. Mm. So, so all of a sudden you've got a, an industry which is based on, on, on the adversarial approach where it's my report versus your report. And the professionals are used to being approached by one person and they say to themselves, I don't need to be a thousand percent accurate because it will all come out in the wash when the other report comes. Mm. So they don't give themselves the mandate or the duty or see the need to check to check their hypothesis before they go before they go before they go forward. Um, now and and the result of that history um, means that too many uh, too many uh, 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 professionals give themselves permission to only hear the one side. Between you and me, seeing how it has gone wrong, we say. How on earth can you lend your name um, to a false report? Mm. And the answer is for money. Yes. Yeah. Okay. For money. So what happens is the, 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 the disappointment to me, Sinta, uh, uh, being in the industry as long as I have, is that I realize that this is psychology. We know that in the general population, there are going to be X percent of people who have this disorder and X percent have that disorder. And it turns out that the professions are not immune to that. Mm. You, can have, you can have professionals who lack empathy, who lack insight, mm. who actually get off on being part of war and writing reports that, that destroy someone. Yes, they like it. True. They like it. So, so we tend to, I think when we're naive, we, we, we do the identity politics thing. Mm. We put a halo to the profession. Mm. Because she is a lawyer, she's going to, be, she's gonna, she's going to care about uh, uh, right and wrong. Mm. Because she's a social worker, she's going to care about family togetherness. Yeah. That's the, and it may be a professional ethic, 
but really you have to scratch the individual and find the individual's motivations and not all of the individuals stand up to scrutiny. That's now you asked a question about um, regulation and, and failure. Are our regulators doing enough to wash out of the profession the predators? And to me, the obvious answer is no. Yeah. In fact, I would say that certain types of predators are protected by the regulators. Yes. And talking about history, if you look at the whole picture of the last 100 years or so, I think we are definitely in a phase where this kind of behavior is flourishing um, because of a lack of training and legislation that needs to change. We just, at, at this stage of the last 30, 40 years, this kind of thing is just at a peak, totally at a peak. Interesting, interesting that you say uh, 40 years. It's around about 40 years since 1979, which was the change to the Divorce Act that really opened the floodgates, that, that allowed both the, um, both the party at fault um, and the party not at fault to get a divorce. True. Um, so until then, until then, the numbers of divorces were low. Since 79, the numbers of divorces exploded and divorce became a, um, a bread and butter, um, uh, a, a mainstream financial opportunity for so many people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the divorce industry is a multi-million dollar industry. Uh, well, billion. Yeah. So, um, Errol, thank but you. Sometime, but sometimes I can, if I pick up yeah. the, the, the multi-billion rand divorce industry, is less regulated than the used car industry. <laughs> really? Mm. All of us would be very scared to go and buy a used car mm. with our eyes closed. True. But the used car industry is better regulated and more information is available than the divorce industry. It's actually ridiculous if you think about it. And well, it's talking about people and families. Yes. Yes. Mm. So transparency, sunshine is always good. Transparency. So we really need to see more of who is approaching who, who is giving what advice, how much is being charged. Are there secret dealings going on between lawyers? Mm. How do the syndicates work that certain attorneys hire certain social workers and psychologists to produce the ambush reports, okay? Um, and what was said, what was said uh, to, the, to the first attorney that launched the high conflict lit litigation? Yeah. And what recourse does the other party have to defend themselves from false accusations that might have popped up in secret in that very conversation yes. mm. okay. and then also you know we it's naive to think that the law is that the legal decisions are made in the courtroom the legal decisions are made in chambers and in corridors mm. and in court they simply act out decision decisions have been made already that's very true right? Many people enter this with an expectation of justice. Yes. And well, a, thoroughly, uh, a thoroughly naive and Hollywood impression of how things work. Mm. Um, so we've had to counsel so many men, men and women who, for example, look forward to the family advocate interview. Mm. They truly believe it's, it's, it's sad. Yes. If they truly believe that the family advocate interview is going to be a remedy to the problem they're experiencing of parental alienation, the denial of contact, the coaching of the children, the abuse they're experiencing, they really believe that the Office of the Family Advocate is somehow going to wave a magic wand. Yes. And then, and then comes the shock when the family advocate's report protects the abuser. Mm. condones a status quo, a one-sided, unfair, unjust status quo that has been produced by violence and deception, and the Office of Family Advocate rubber stamps 
yes. that, that, that wants out of status quo. And then you have this, uh, 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 you have the, the sh you see the shock in people's eyes mm -hmm. when they realize that they were deluded about how things work. Mm -hmm. And of course, that delusion is dangerous yeah. because they believe the system will produce justice. They get lazy, they relax. Yeah. They think, I don't have to do anything. The judge will say something. The magistrate will see something. The, fa the, the family advocate will write something. Yeah. None of the above. You do not get justice in this country without working for it. That's very true. And that specific, I've seen it also many times. It's, it's literally a disillusionment. It's disbelief. People cannot believe that things turn out that way. And that brings me back to the education that you mentioned earlier also that's important and necessary in schools already. Um, yes. is about the law and how these things work because the public has a totally uh, a misconception of yes. how the legal processes work and what, what can be expected from the courts and from yes. legal professionals. We have, like you said, literally have a Hollywood image of how it's supposed to work and it's not the reality. And as long as, let's be frank, you know, um, lawyers, as long as legal ignorance mm. suits the legal profession we will not get the public legal uh, education programs that we need True. and we won't True. see in in schools the 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 legal preparation training that that, that kids need for adulthood mm. so there's going to have to be so i'm not expecting that the self-regulators will voluntarily produce the programs that that the public needs. So I mean, this is really where I mean, sort of, who can help? Um, this is where I'm expecting the Minister of Justice, where I'm expecting civil society mm -hmm. to lobby the government to produce the uh, uh, public education programs. Public education. And so, what would a public legal education do? Well it will reduce the number of high conflict marriages. It will prevent domestic violence. Yes. It will prevent these high conflict divorces. It will prevent a handful of cases clogging up courts for 10 years at a, at a stretch. Mm -hmm. Yes, it will also prevent certain lawyers from earning millions out of cases. But if, if we uphold the standard of the best interest of the child and we have to choose, will we enrich a few lawyers with millions or will we protect women and children from, dem from domestic violence and stop a, 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 a generational curse operating on families? Yes. Which do we choose? Well, if we're, not, if we're gonna do more than just pay lip service to section seven, section nine of the Children's Act, if we're actually going to believe and, 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 and apply the best into the children, we will reform the law of divorce and we will educate children and adults in their legal options and especially in, legal, in, in preventing problems rather than the current system, which is milking the problems yes, rather than yes. preventing them. Yeah, very well said. Thank you for that, uh, Errol. I find it ironic that it costs a few thousand rand, if that, to draw up a marriage contract and get married. But when you want to annul that or dissolve that, it costs millions. Well, you can argue that there is a psychological contract in operation in the legal industry to starve of any meaning, the anti-nuptial contract. Mm to actually inflame situations and to open as many gaps as possible for conflict afterwards. Yes. So on that one, um, I've been recommending that the anti nuptial contract comes with a parenting plan. I agree. I fully support that. Okay. And yes. then secondly, um, that there is a, 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 a a peace period during any during any divorce where the behavior of the of the of the of the of the parties are monitored mm -hmm. so all too easily you can win the divorce by saying he or she did this in the marriage 
Yes. Meanwhile, you yourself are doing vicious things in the divorce. Yeah, exactly. So people's, people's behavior during the divorce has to be a key factor in their, in, 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 in their ability to retain their children. If you want to have your 50-50 access and contact with your child, you have to prove in the divorce that you're a fit parent. Not just get away with false accusations in the marriage. Yes. Okay? It's almost as if everybody has to evaluate, be evaluated. Yes. And then I can go as far back as saying people need to be evaluated before they have children, actually, <laughs> to determine whether they'll be fit parents. Very well, interesting. Yeah. So... I think th there are technological tools available that are not being used. Yes. There are, five, there are online tests that people can do. I'm not, saying it's, I'm not saying it's perfect, but we can do a whole lot more to prepare ourselves before we make the big decisions to marry yes. and certainly the big decision to divorce. Yeah, I think there's a lot. I agree with you. There's a lot that needs to be done in terms of training for relationships before marriage, and that will go a long way um, beyond that. We've... Uh, We've unfortunately run out of time. I'm so sorry. We need to do another um, interview, please, Errol, if we can, because we need to discuss the, the, the dirty tricks and get some examples and case studies from you. I'd love to do that. Um, I look forward to it, Hunter. Yeah, thank you. But thank you for this. This has been very insightful and very interesting um, as well. Uh, I will be in contact with you to make some further arrangements. Let's do that as soon as possible. There is so much to talk about. Thank you, Santa. Enjoy the rest of your youth day. Yes, thank you. Same to you. Okay. Bye -bye. Thank you. This is Cynthia from Fair Divorce. And on this beautiful Youth Day, we've had an interesting discussion about how this divorce and marriage and relationships and the legal entities affect that. Thank you for joining us. And please connect with me via my website, www.fairdivorce.co.za, or uh, any of the uh, social media platforms, you'll find me on Facebook, Fair Divorce, you'll find me on Instagram, you'll find me on Twitter, and all over the place. And you can also listen to my podcasts of these interviews. I hope to speak to you again soon.